Welcome to this video discussing techniques that can be used with various risk metrics. We will go over the use of total risk, predicted tracking error, and value at risk. The basis of this video will be to observe these metrics for a sample portfolio and discuss different ways to utilize them. There are multiple statistics one should look to as part of an active risk management process. We will focus on three of the most commonly used metrics. Each of these statistics has merit in isolation, but a more robust process will not fall into the trap of relying on a single metric. Risk predictions rely heavily on model construction and estimation, and although various models can provide valid risk estimates, they will almost certainly do a better job of predicting magnitude and trend than an actual tracking error figure. As such, mandates aside, Risk measures should be used as a catalyst for discussion rather than a hard and fast level to manage to. Risk measures serve us better in a relative context. Is a 3% predicted tracking error high for my fund? Well, let's compare it to where estimates were last quarter. Did our tracking error go up, down, or stay relatively flat? How does it look when judged against the realized tracking error of the strategy? These types of questions will lead to better risk analysis than just looking at individual numbers. Lastly, it never hurts to have multiple sources. It's like getting a second opinion from a doctor. If both sets of figures tell you the same story, it serves as further validation. If they diverge, it could be possible that the construction of one model is able to give you an earlier warning about some upcoming shifts in the market environment. For example, you can use both statistical and fundamental models, or models with different time horizons. Now we'll take some time to walk through using those risk measures in the context we just discussed. The total risk statistic measures the risk of our strategy versus that of a risk-free asset. Comparing this to its counterpart, benchmark risk, we view the predicted volatility of our strategy in absolute terms against its benchmark. Here we see that our portfolio is more risky than our benchmark when viewed against cash. We also have our predicted tracking error number. Again, by itself, it shows us a single point estimate of what the potential variation in return from the benchmark could be. However, we can get more out of this figure from a couple of different angles. This chart provides us a view of how our predicted tracking error has changed through time and includes estimates from two different risk models. We can see that the strategy is taking on less risk and becoming more like the benchmark. The late spike from the statistical model shows an earlier reaction that could have served as a warning of upcoming volatility. From a different point of view, let's look at the latest point estimate and compare it to the realized tracking error figures of the strategy. Here we see that the current active risk level of 3.28 is within the range of what the strategy is used to experiencing. If this was outside the normal bounds, we should look for the source of the shift and whether or not this is intended or ultimately desired. Let's take a more granular look at our portfolio in a different risk estimate in VAR. Value at risk measures the worst expected loss over a given horizon in normal market conditions at a given confidence level. Here we are using FactSet's MAC model to produce Monte Carlo VAR estimates. The daily construction and short-term nature of this model makes it more appropriate for analyzing value at risk than models intended for longer horizons that are constructed with less frequent data. You can view the contribution to this estimate from various asset classes, sectors, or even at the individual security level. We can compare the estimate at different confidence intervals and also to those from extreme events. Here we can view our current 10-day VAR compared to what our current portfolio looked like during the financial crisis. To recap, there are various measures that we can use as part of risk analysis. It is better to have multiple points of view and reference than to fixate on one number. Use these measures to discuss the portfolio positioning and not as a simple law to determine whether action is needed. Thank you for taking the time to view our presentation.